has secrets. I think the devil is down here. It's my job to reveal. Who the hell would do this? But Steve and I <laughs> never speak. We never communicate during an investigation. What? Until the very end. Who's he looking to kill? We uncover if it's safe for you to stay. You need to get out of here right now. Or time to get out. <laughs> it was like endless darkness. Oh, a, r- a ridiculous intro. So over the top. <laughs> Apologies for that noise fest. But yes, that's the oh, setup. Oh, man. There's so many just highlights in that opening thing. And my favorite part, of course, is that we never speak to each other. We don't even want to look <laughs> each other in the eye. This could be two separate television shows as far as you're concerned. We yeah. hate each other. <laughs> I, lo- I do love that. I love the way that he says it. And we never even speak to each other. Like, it's, it's so I don't dr- even so recognize dramatic. her as a human being. Yeah, when we have sex, we wear blindfolds, both of us. Like, why would you even <laughs> I don't know say that any image. of that on the intro? I don't. No, no. But yeah, they're trying too hard to cover something up that we never even see. I don't even know this chick's name. But <laughs> she's not for- my the wife. Formula, the formula for this show is that Amy and Steve, of course, never speak to each other. And Amy goes <laughs> Amy goes to the location uh, of the haunting, of course, after her husband, uh, ex-husband now, goes before her to clear the location of any personal items such as photos and other stuff that might lead Amy in any way. And then Amy arrives to the spot and she walks around. Seriously, that's why her her whole thing is that it's called just a walk around. She just walks around, talks to the camera, her husband, uh, ex-husband now, who still got to stay on the show. That was kind of amiable, I'm assuming. All right. That's very civil of them. It was very good for them. He didn't lose his gig. Uh, and Steve, the detective, because he doesn't want to see her. On the other hand, he does all the boring stuff. You'll barely hear him in this. He goes, he talks to the homeowners. He talks to researcher. He talks to the camera while he drives around. And he is generally not very exciting. Oh, not like Amy is, though. The whole reason <laughs> is to watch this show. Rob, you have to go. Oh, it's just for dude. Amy. The whole reason to watch the show is for Amy walking around, talking all about the spirit stuff. She is a lot of fun, right? Yeah, she's she's a bit eccentric, but uh, it balances out the show pretty well uh, when you see the detective work that's going on on the other yeah, end. Yeah, it's so boring. Um, it's so boring. Yeah, and she just Whenever she's on every- the screen, she does kind of steal the show. She lights it up. Um, she lights it up for sure. Yeah, there's a reason this thing has been going on for like, I don't know, over 10 seasons now. This is another huge show. Oh, it's, my it's God. Over 10 seasons? Holy tons. shit. Tons. Yeah. She's been through. Uh, many, I don't know. She's cool. This, But this episode that... <laughs> This episode we're talking about, though, this is season three, episode 12, Innocent Blood. And Amy and Steve, they're called out to Rome, New York, to help a couple named Sue and Joe who have three children and are under paranormal attack in their own home. And the activity is so bad, Sue says it's going to end their marriage. What? Which sounds very out of the Jerry Springer. They throw that out there for a little they extra They just drama. need an excuse to get a divorce, these poor people. Because of the alien ghost? It's an alien ghost it's or something? Lots like, going. You know they what? don't There's know. too much we, activity here. We, we don't know yet course. so far. We're going to find out. So Amy's husband, of course, just per the usual of this uh, show, he goes and clears out the house for her. And here is Amy Allen doing her very first walkthrough and talk with the dead people. So in my opening, I saw all of these thick trees and there were all these Native American warriors standing there with their bow and arrow drawn. They're waiting for something to happen. They were put there uh, by this leader guy. He says it is some kind of like spirit warfare. He says that there were problems before uh, the white man that they had a lot of battles, many battles, uh, with these spirits. Yeah, these are immediately arriving here, and activity is everywhere. Spiritual warfare before the white man, and uh, yeah, like the Amy, Amy Allen. What do you guys think? Oh, mm, I love how she pronounces words. She is she does. She calls warriors, warriors. It's just that's it's she said, great. She said something that reminded me of a uh, an old sound clip. Play soundboard too for me, Rob. Thick trees. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I laughed at that one too. Big. Thick, thick kids. <laughs> yeah, we got thick kids, and she saw some thick, thick trees, trees, and it sounds so much like it. It's unbelievable. I got to hear that again. Thick trees. <laughs> <laughs> Big, thick trees. Big, 
thick kids. Maybe she's sending out a code early on because it starts off just sounding like the standard paranormal fare. She she is like the worst though with the way that she talks. She talks Uh. so slowly that it's you know when you when you're listening to podcasts and you accidentally hit the button the playback speed button button? yeah sure yeah and it's and everybody sounds like they're drunk like that's what she (laughs) sounds like when she's just talking full blast. She just sounds like she's getting this info uh, uh, you know live to her and uh i do like she has like she's a nervous energy but mm. she, she comes off with like a nervous energy i mean she's got great facial expressions which is terrible to talk about on a podcast but she that's what makes <laughs> her very engaging to watch but you can hear it in her voice yeah the way uh she's just a character and uh <laughs> and like i said it sounds like just normal uh standard paranormal fare until amy says this it says that there is some kind of family of beasts and they think that they're ghosts. These things are occasionally trying to enter the house. They're very dark and they look kind of like human beings, but they're definitely not. Were they living? I don't know yet. They just look creepy. <laughs> oh my yeah. god yeah i cannot stand the way she talks like they look kind of like human beings well, it's coming to her right now the native american ghost is telling amy that there's these non-human things she didn't say it yet she mm. said non-human things that think there are ghosts and they're trying to get in the house and they look See, creepy now, that's confusing like what does she mean they think they're ghosts like what would they know about ghosts if they weren't like that's our concept of ghosts that it's, we have She's just the receptor. She's, she's just able to tell what in. ghosts can think also. That's like, that's that layers of power. A, that's powers on power. No, it's what a ghost now. thinks an alien ghost thinks it is. I do. It's something like <laughs> that. It thinks it's a ghost. Like, what? Oh, man, I'm so lost. You're, you lost me. You lost how me. Do, well, how, does, how is there going to no, be a I'll being that like thinks it's Bring a human back. ghost? Oh, man. Please fix us. We'll, Russ, we'll fix, fix it. I will. Amy has more about these non-human spirits. These things are pretty tall. Their head kind of jets forward on a long neck, and they're hunched. And you can really see their shoulder blades. And also they have like a spine thing that sticks out. And then really long arms with the long fingers. It's like a weird dragging sound against the house. Do you have any idea how the living might perceive them? Making noises on the outside of the house, looking in through windows, growling. Do you know what they want? They definitely have their sights set on the children here. Maybe these are what the Native American warriors are fending off. Hmm. Maybe they are trying to protect kids. Maybe. Oh, God. She, I mean, she doesn't sound a little sure of herself, but no. she's saying. No, she never does with spines? <laughs> Perhaps. Shoulder blades? Something. But something. she says a long neck and big shoulders and a head. It sounded a lot like what Josie was describing in that Roswell ghost, huh? Mm, yeah. Yeah, sure. It does. What I, and then the fact that she was talking about that it, it's targeting the children, I think we're just talking about right now is some pedophiles with poor posture. Oh. Huh? Okay. And that can be very well. I mean, how does she. Kn- Here's what but I don't she's, get. No, she's talking to the dead, and this thing thinks sure. it's a ghost, and it's got a long neck and a shoulder, a spine, maybe thing. I how think it wants how to is gross. it not a human spirit? Like, how do you know that it's like not. She, 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 I don't know. She's got, she's got this. Look, she, she's on the dead files. She, she knows these she things. Knows? She knows. Yeah. She, it's like the X files, but it's the dead files. Oh, I've you never know, heard right. anyone sound more right. sure of themselves in my life. While Amy does all this, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steve, the detective, this is the, the a part of the show you're not going to hear. Steve, the detective, he goes and talks to Sue, the homeowner, about the activity. And the activity is actually very creepy. Uh, anything else going on? Aside from being touched a few times. No. What do you mean touched? Well, there was an incident in the shower one time where I felt like somebody had rubbed the outer part of my right arm. And there was another time in the (laughs) living room on the couch. Okay, what happened? I felt this grope. So I'm assuming it was forceful. Being touched, it's a violation. Not only for me, but for my husband. I will do whatever I have to do to make sure that my kids 
do not experience what I've experienced. I have an idea. Move out. <laughs> yeah. So this this groping, groping part has been added. And that is awful, too. And this, the reason they want to stay, this is her husband's inherited family home. But I'm going to say this. No offense. This is not a great looking house. If you go watch this house, this house is kind of trash. The siding is all screwed up in the front. <laughs> it looks bad. It's not like some like old antebellum, you know, family home that you want to keep for generations. It looks like it looks like trash. It really is not like, oh, why they're defending <laughs> wow. it so much. Wow. I mean, Russ. sometimes, you know, sometimes there's something that has things to do with your, you know, family and emotions that maybe it doesn't look the greatest, but, you okay. know, your heart's there. But that, she that doesn't even really know about that. Of you. She doesn't even <laughs> she doesn't even know about the alien jet, but she's getting groped. And it's, you know, what she's saying, it's a violation. And it is well, terrible. It I know a lot like of times we joke groping. We've joked about spectrophilia. That's fucked up. That's, That's like, the I was willing, laughing. Yeah. If I was really like goofing around and laughing, and then all of a sudden it got it got it real. It did yeah, she's it got like, real. I got touched. I'm like, and you know what? I, that really isn't okay. Yeah. All of a sudden, I had to kind of bite my tongue, and I'm just like, all right, now this just got serious. Like I've See, been I've been touched before, which what I thought was from a ghost. I felt like my butt got touched one time, but usually it's like my lower leg. And then you just, you know, you get mad. It's like that's not okay to do, like from a living person or an alien. It's not. This so, is yeah, an amethyst yeah. realm. And this is an amethyst realm willing territory. This is bad. Oh, yeah. It's definitely not a place you want to be. And if you want really, really want to just avoid it, that's what I'm just trying to maybe rationalize it by saying you can do. You guys can do better. The, all right, you can fix the side <laughs> outside. Sure, I don't know. The inside looked fine. It, it's not like it wasn't a hoarder situation. But they cut sure. back to Amy, <laughs> and she has more to say about this mysterious ghost monster long neck guy. The leader of the Native Americans is showing me a horrifying scene where the tall creatures by the side of the house are killing small children. Kids. Kids. It's pretty gross and sad. Yeah, it's pretty gross. This story, like... Yeah, the alien part is really upsetting and on top of all this other stuff. And I'm just playing that parts that are pertinent to the topic of alien ghosts, however... There is so much more going on at this place. This house sits on the grounds where there was a famous bloody battle from the French Indian War. And the original occupants of the house, they suffered multiple tragedy tragedies like a bull mutilating an old woman. Whoa. And, oh, God another damn. thing worth noting is that this show is either very fake or Amy is really super, super talented because <laughs> every, everything that she says is almost immediate, immediately corroborated by Steve, the detective. And who, it doesn't matter. Whoever he's talking to, if it's a researcher, if it's an eyewitness, anytime she brings up anything, they're immediately like, oh, so your grandpa smoked a lot. She's like, I smell cigarettes everywhere. Like, it just matches <laughs> too perfectly. Oh, uh, so you're saying uh, you may think it's produced is what you're saying. That it's Look, uh, of course, we, we, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Oh, is this a black flag? I was like, we did a black well because it's almost I the same situation. But I can't say either way. I don't know. Maybe, like I said, maybe she's just great at what she does, and maybe that's why she got a show. But oh, she's so good at it. She's, <laughs> she's so great. good at it that she doesn't even have to come up with it on her own. She gets to wait for somebody to suggest it. That's how good she is. I did joke that I was like, it'd be funny if she just had an earpiece in and everything she hears from Steve, she's just like, all right, now, oh, wait, there was a battle here. I see a guy with an arrow. There he comes. Yep. But, yep. I'm yep. really good at it. You can't say either <laughs> way. So after Amy completes her walk, she meets with a sketch artist to draw the ghosts or the beings that Amy encountered to present to the family. And this leads to this dramatic conclusion. They tell the family all about the Native American ghost and the French Indian War Massacre, all this great stuff that happened on their property. And then Amy shows them her first sketch, and it's of an old Italian man who's a spirit in the house. And amazingly, he looks identical to Joe the homeowner's grandfather. I mean, identical. Wow, what mm. are the odds? <laughs> And her husband cleared the house before. How did she do it? It is it, – and he's the guy who smells like smoke. They matched it earlier. So they Must just, not have done a very good yeah. job. And she also brings up that her daughter might be a medium because there is a line of ghosts waiting outside of this girl's bedroom. And they're all waiting for her to get home because when she dreams, she's a medium and, I don't know, sends them um, to finish whatever they're doing. So yeah. they – and then the, the family pretty much confirms it like, yeah, she wrote a book called Drops of Dripping Blood and she's like nine years old. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, – and, but they finally get to the good stuff. The I can't even say it yet. The non-human stuff. Let's hear. This is, you know, one of the things that really bothered me. 
I saw.